Hello and welcome to Love from the Other Side. If you are on this video, perhaps you too are in need of hope. We bring you stories from around the world of people who have shared their near-death experiences. Today we are bringing you part two of our previous video. After suffering from a terminal illness in 1982, Melon Thomas Benedict died for an hour and a half and he was monitored showing no vital signs. This is what he experienced on the other side, part two. Before we get too far into this, I would like to take a moment to apologize for my absence from creating new content. As you may be able to tell from my voice, I have been dealing with a head cold for well over a week and I am just getting back on track where I can talk halfway normal enough to do a video. So please excuse my raspy voice as we continue exploring this fascinating testimony. In part one, he rose up out of his body and went into the light. He also had a hell experience. Beyond that, he was curious about the universe and he was taken into the remote depths of existence, even beyond into the energetic void of nothingness. Let's pick up there. It seemed as if all the creations of the universe soared by me and vanished in a speck of light. Almost immediately, a second light appeared. It came from all sides and was so different. A light made up of more than every frequency of the universe. I felt and heard several velvety sonic booms again. My consciousness or being was expanding to interface with the entire universe and more. As I passed into the second light, the awareness came to me that I had just transcended the truth. Those are the best words I have for it, but I will try to explain. As I passed into the second light, I expanded beyond the first light. I found myself in a profound stillness beyond all silence. I could see or perceive forever beyond infinity. I was in the void. I was in pre-creation before the Big Bang. I had crossed over the beginning of time, the first word, the first vibration. I was in the eye of creation. I felt as if I was touching the face of God. It was not a religious feeling. Simply, I was at one with absolute life and consciousness. When I say that I could see or perceive forever, I mean that I could experience all of creation generating itself. It was without beginning and without end. That is a mind-expanding thought, isn't it? Scientists perceived the Big Bang as a single event which created the universe. I saw that the Big Bang is only one of an infinite number of Big Bangs, creating universes endlessly and simultaneously. The only images that even come close in human terms would be those created by supercomputers using fractal geometry equations. I saw that each and every little piece of creation has the power to create. It's very difficult to try to explain this. I am still speechless about this. It took me years after I returned to assimilate any words at all for the void experience. I can tell you this now. The void is less than nothing, yet more than everything. The void is absolute zero, chaos forming all possibilities. It is absolute consciousness, much more than even universal intelligence. Where is the void? I know. The void is inside and outside of everything. You, right now, even while you live, are always inside and outside the void simultaneously. You don't have to go anywhere or die to get there. The void is the vacuum or nothingness between all physical manifestations, the space between atoms and their components. Modern science has begun to study the space between everything, they call it zero point. Whenever they try to measure it, their instruments go off the scale or to infinity, so to speak. They have no way, as of yet, to measure infinity accurately. What mystics call the void is not a void. It's so full of energy, a different kind of energy that has created everything that we are. Everything since the Big Bang is vibration, from the first word, which is the first vibration. So creation is God exploring God's self through every way imaginable. 
in an ongoing, infinite exploration through every one of us. Through every piece of hair on your head, through every leaf on every tree, through every atom, God is exploring God's self, the great I Am. I began to see that everything that is, is the self, literally, yourself, myself. Everything is the great self. That is why God knows even when a leaf falls. That is possible because wherever you are is the center of the universe. Wherever any atom is, that is the center of the universe. There is God in that and God in the void. I suddenly came back through the second light or Big Bang, hearing several more velvet booms. I rode the stream of consciousness back through all of creation and what a ride it was. The super clusters of galaxies came through me with even more insights. I passed through the center of our galaxy, which is a black hole. Black holes are the great processors or recyclers of the universe. In its total energy configuration, the galaxy looked like a fantastic city of lights. All energy this side of the Big Bang is light. Every sub-atom, atom, star, planet, even consciousness itself is made of light and has a frequency and or particle. Light is living. Everything is made of light, even stones. So everything is alive. Everything is made from the light of God. Everything is very intelligent. As I rode the stream on and on, I could eventually see a huge light coming. I knew it was the first light, the higher self light matrix of our solar system. The entire solar system appeared in the light, accompanied by one of those velvet booms. I saw that the solar system we live in is our larger local body. This is our local body and we are much bigger than we imagine. I saw that the solar system is our body. I am part of this, and the earth is this great created being that we are, and we are part of it. But we are only part of it. We are not everything, but we are that part that knows that it is. I could see all of the energy that this solar system generates, and it is an incredible light show. I could hear the music of the spheres. Our solar system, as do all celestial bodies, generates a unique matrix of light, sound, and vibratory energies. The Earth's wonder child, human beings, make an abundance of sound right now, like children playing in the backyard of the universe. I rode the stream directly into the center of the light. I felt embraced by the light as it took me with it in its breath again followed by another sonic boom. I was in this great light of love with streams of life flowing through me. I have to say again, it is the most loving, non-judgmental light. It is the ideal parent for this wonder child. What now, I wondered. The light explained to me that there is no death. We are immortal beings. We have already been alive forever. I realize that we are part of a natural living system that recycles itself endlessly. I was never told that I had to come back. I just knew that I would. It was only natural from what I had seen. I don't know how long I was in the light in human time, but there came a moment when I realized that all of my questions had been answered and my return was near. When I say that all of my questions were answered on the other side, I mean to say just that. All of my questions had been answered. Every human has a different life and a set of questions to explore. Some of our questions are universal, but each of us is exploring this thing we call life in our own unique way. So is every other form of life, from mountains to every leaf on every tree. And that is so very important to the rest of us in this universe because it all contributes to the big picture, the fullness of life. We are literally God exploring God's self in an infinite dance of life. Your uniqueness enhances all of life. I began my return to the life cycle. It never crossed my mind, nor was I told, that I would return to the same body. It just did not matter. 
I had complete trust in the light and the life process. As the stream merged with the great light, I asked never to forget the revelations and feelings of what I had learned on the other side. There was a yes. It felt like a kiss to my soul. Then I was taken back through the light to the vibratory realm again. The whole process reversed, with even more information being given to me. I came back home and I was given lessons on the mechanics of reincarnation. I was given answers to all those little questions I had. The earth is a great processor of energy. An individual consciousness evolves out of that into each one of us. I thought of myself as a human for the first time, and I was happy to be that. From what I have seen, I would be happy to be an atom in this universe, an atom. So to be the human part of God, this is a most fantastic blessing. It is a blessing beyond our wildest estimation of what blessings can be. For each and every one of us to be the human part of this experience is awesome and magnificent. Each and every one of us, no matter where we are, screwed up or not, is a blessing to this planet right where we are. So I went through the reincarnation process expecting to be a baby somewhere, but I was given a lesson on how individual identity and consciousness evolve. So I reincarnated back into this body. I was so surprised when I opened my eyes. I do not know why, because I understood it, but it was still such a surprise to be back in this body, back in my room, with someone looking over me crying her eyes out. It was my hospice caretaker. She had given up an hour and a half after finding me dead. She was sure I was dead. All the signs of death were there. I was getting stiff. We did not know how long I was dead, but we do know that it was an hour and a half since I was found. She honored my wish to have my newly dead body left alone for a few hours as much as she could. We had many ways of checking out the vital functions of the body to see what was happening. She can verify that I was really dead. It was not a near-death experience. I experienced death itself for at least an hour and a half. She found me dead and monitored me for an hour and a half. Then I awakened and saw the light outside. I tried to get up and go to it, but I fell out of the bed. She heard a loud clunk and ran in and found me on the floor. When I recovered, I was very surprised, yet very awed about what had happened to me. At first, the memory of the trip that I have now was not there. I kept slipping out of this world and kept asking, am I alive? This world seemed more like a dream than that one. Within three days, I was feeling normal again, clearer yet different than I had ever in my life. My memory of the journey came back to me. I could see nothing wrong with any human being I had ever seen. Before, I was really judgmental. I thought a lot of people were really screwed up. In fact, I thought that everybody was screwed up but me. But I got clear on all of that. About three months later, a friend said I should get tested. So I went and got scans and so forth. I felt really good, so I was afraid of getting bad news. I remember the doctor at the clinic looking at the before and after scans and saying, well, there is nothing here now. I said, really, it must be a miracle. He said, no, these things happen. They're called spontaneous remission. He acted very unimpressed. But here was a miracle, and I was impressed, even if no one else was. The mystery of life has very little to do with intelligence. The universe is not an intellectual process at all. The intellect is helpful. It is brilliant. But right now, that is all that we process with instead of our hearts and the wiser part of ourselves. The center of the earth is a great transmuter of energy, just as you see in pictures of our earth's magnetic field that are a cycle pulling reincarnated souls back in and through it again. I saw that races are personality clusters. Nations like France, Germany, and China have their own personality. Cities have their own personality. There are local group souls that attract certain people. 
families have group souls. Individual identity is evolving like branches of a fractal. The group soul explores in our individuality. The different questions that each of us have are very, very important. So ask yourself questions. Do your searching. You will find yourself and you will find God in that self. More than that, I began to see that each one of us humans are soulmates. We are part of the same soul, out of many creative directions, but still the same. Now I look at every human being I ever see, and I see a soulmate, my soulmate, the one I have always been looking for. Beyond that, the greatest soulmate you will ever have is yourself. Don't look out there for God. Look here for God. Look through yourself. Start having the greatest love affair you ever had with yourself. You will love everything out of that. I had a descent into what you might call hell and it was very surprising. I did not see Satan or evil. My descent into hell was a descent into each person's custom human misery, ignorance, and darkness of not knowing. It seemed like a miserable eternity. But each of the millions of souls around me had a little star of light always available, but no one seemed to pay attention to it. They were so consumed with their own grief, trauma, and misery. But after what seemed like an eternity, I started calling out to that light, like a child calling to a parent for help. Then the light opened up and formed a tunnel that came right to me. It insulated me from all that fear and pain. That's what hell really is. Soon our science will quantify spirit. Isn't that going to be wonderful? We are coming up with devices now that are sensitive to subtle energy or spirit energy. Well, one day they are going to come down to the little things that hold it all together. And they are going to have to call that God. I saw forever. I came to a realm in which there is a point where we pass all knowledge and we begin creating the next fractal, the next level. We have the power to create as we explore. And that is God expanding himself through us. Since my return, I have experienced light spontaneously and I have learned how to get to that space almost any time in meditation. Each one of you can do this. You do not have to die to do this. It is within your equipment. You are already wired for this. The body is the most magnificent light being there is. The body is this universe of incredible light. After dying and coming back, I really respect life and death. One day we are actually going to see the wisdom of life and death and enjoy it. This body that you are in has been alive forever. It comes from an unending stream of life, going back to the Big Bang and beyond. This body gives life to the next generation. In defense and subtle energy, this body has been alive forever. Well, friends, that is the conclusion of part two of Melon Thomas Benedict. I hope that you enjoyed these experiences that he shared, and I know that you may not agree with everything, but I do ask that you keep all comments respectful and kind. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with us today. And if you have not done so yet, I would love to invite you to be the newest subscriber to Love from the Other Side. Until next time, God bless.